Um, we have the minutes that went out. Uh, I don't know if you had a chance to read them. I had a few corrections, mostly grammatical, for Mike. Um, and uh, on the, um, on the uh, solar panels, uh, I think what Rusty had in mind was, or said was that the, no one wants to uh, take on the responsibility if we move them to another school. I mean, no solar power guy. And, and they are obsolete already, the, the technology. Uh, so we're not going to be moving them somewhere else, but we might still be able to move them during the construction to another part of the roof, maybe. We'll find out. That's about the only real difference I had. Um, are there any other corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, do I have a motion to approve? Duke? <coughs> and John, all in favor? Thank you very much. Um, all right, we had our our fourth workshop, and since Diane's not here, and I'm the only person standing, uh, I wanted to <laughs> carry thought. Um, a lot of the review was was focused on the uh, the architecture part, um, the exterior, and uh, I think that. Uh, I'll let, actually, Nick can talk about what happened at the Airbnb with showing the, the results. But uh, I think that the, the, the idea was that they tried to tone down the exterior to make it more, if you will, historic looking, or shall I say, long lasting. Um, I think that the, most of the people, a small group there thought it was helpful. Uh, the interiors we talked a little bit about, but not much. Um, so that this was really more about the exterior of the building and we talked about the bus loop and the parking and all of that. Uh, the minutes, I think, have come out and hopefully you get a chance to read them. I think I sent them out with the yes. So if there are any questions about those minutes, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Um, otherwise, I'll let the minutes and the report speak for itself. Okay. Um, with regard to the uh, ARB, you were there, Nick. I was, yeah. How did it go? Uh, overall, pretty well. Um, Slane was there with uh, Kemp, Dean, and one of their landscape architects. Um, they gave a lengthy presentation. Um, again, the overall feedback was well received. Um, I think the biggest issues, which in my mind are not major to address, is the colonnade at the gym exterior how it kind of steps up and uh, is, I think, rather large portion. The, the canopy at the end? You right. Mean? Okay. And then how there's an end wall. Yeah. So the recommendation was to kind of eliminate the step and kind of <coughs> scale that down and <coughs> open the end wall a little bit. What do you mean by end wall? Is that they, the wall that's blocking the service? Yes, with the, with the little porthole window. They weren't too fond of that. Um, there, there's a section of the there's a section of the building that they have a canopy running sort of parallel to the building, right. and it extends out to the basically where the exit from the gym side would be. Yep. And at the end of it, it seems more decorative in nature. There's a kind of like a, a curve to the top of it with a porthole. Exactly. Yep. That's not the wall that separates the service area from the um, the outdoor dining space. They're two okay. different end walls. Right. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. So yeah, I was referring to what Luke just described, um, and we kind of described that there was somewhat of a purpose to it, a little bit of delineation to keep the students from straying down that way, but they suggest that we accomplish that in other ways, maybe a lower bench, um, they're concerned about sight lines, and et cetera. Um, and also it seems that um, according to the way the school schedule works, where the children arrive between what, 8, 8, 840 8, and 845, yeah. then they go out to the field to play first, right. the, that would sort of almost sort of be a blockage coming back into the main entrance, to that entrance down there. Yeah. So. Uh, how did they, uh, 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 and this is very subjective, how did they uh, look at the umbra pattern in the brick? So there was um, definitely discussion on that. There was similar concerns that I think we first expressed that it could be a, a trendy, uh, you know, pattern, yeah. which, um, you know, SLAM definitely defended. Um, so again, there was no formal recommendations. I think it, it They'll still consider it, but they just voice their opinion that they don't want it to date the building in you know, 10 right. years, et cetera. So. Well, that, that's always one of the concerns, really. Yeah. Um, and they did kind of, you know, look at the project 
holistically and definitely commented on other areas that I'm not necessarily sure that's under their purview, but they definitely were inquisitive about <laughs> Got parking and traffic volume and all sorts of good stuff. But uh, for the most part, I think it's well received. So. It was longer than you expected. I Much guess. longer, yeah. So close. And close to an hour, hour plus. An hour for an informal meeting. Right. Do you sense that in terms of the, the number of interactions required, do you feel like it will obviously depend on how refined everything gets from a design perspective, but do you think the next interaction is kind of the official approval, or do you feel like they're going to want I think more? It, in my opinion, I think it should be. I don't think okay. the informals going forward are going to be beneficial because they're not really going to put anything on paper for us to go back with. and I think. Again, the general concepts were well were, were received, so I think SLAM has their homework, and okay. I think the next step probably should be to formally put something in. So they, they didn't com <coughs> comment too much about the landscaping as such? They did. Um, we didn't quite get to that. Um, again, the presentation was a little <coughs> lengthy. Um, you know, they commented on locations of bioswales, et cetera, which again, I don't know what those fall under their mm. purview, but. Um, I mean, I know, I know from the, the security meeting that, that uh, any large tree plantings near the building is, are probably not going to happen for security reasons, so I hope they don't get involved in all that. So. Yeah, we, I don't think we got to that point. The renderings that they did show for elevations weren't really in-depth with landscaping details. Um, they did a quick overview of what proposed plantings they would do, which no one seemed to take issue with. So. Okay. Um, Anything else about the AR, AR, our first attempt at ARV? No? Okay. I guess I'll go, thank God it wasn't too bad. <laughs> Never know. Um, okay, on our enabling phase, um, Dr. Adley and Dr. Gentlemen, are we, do we have our plan down? So kind of uh, where the main, um, the main translation issues are there'll be two ELP classes going to Toganik. Right. Um, and uh, we did review before the break. Uh, we have a wee change in plan before the break um, to explore, which was really, uh, there was thought about splitting up the cafeteria uh, for two other classrooms and for, for two other DLC rooms. Uh, tend to think that we may have an alternate solution to that and a better solution in terms of programmatically, we're trying to keep all the kids in the building, basically, if possible. And another way to do that without really impact in the cafeteria, which kids go to all the time. That, that's a progr big programmatic space, and it's a big cultural space. Like, you know, for two years, um, if you're taking it offline for six months, that's one thing, but for two years, you're, that's a huge sort of gathering space. Uh, so our intent is to try and relocate the library services, for the most part, into the double uh, a portable classroom outside because the library services can also be pushed in and can also be pushed in the classrooms uh, so we think that that, that will be a, a better alternative uh, I think Slam is looking at that as we speak so to speak uh, I do think that, that it's important now that the D&D &D design phase is over that they now come right full circle and really look at this holistically with the time frame and that type of stuff those are the main things um, Luke's done a great job with Mike sort of relocating the rest of the, the, the programs, uh, given all the demarcation zones that we have. So that's the, the, the big overview. Um, look, if there's anything I'm missing there. No, I think that's well said. We just also want to make sure that the square footage of the library was relatively the same to the square footage of the common room, so that we could buy those two classrooms and those two DLC rooms, and we think it is. So SLAM is gonna review our um, recommendation and, and hopefully make that available to us. Um, so it was just last week, so we're, we're eager to get their stamp as well. All right, well, he, he, here's, the, here's the concern that on the 5th of March, we have to give a presentation to the, the parents and the community. And I know that one of the, a lot of the questions will be around what's going on during the construction. And uh, not knowing, that the sooner that we know, okay, this is, this is the plan for enabling, then ONG can start drawing up where their security fences are going to be, uh, what the drainage is going to be, what the blockage is. You know, we already know that they're going to build a retaining wall at the bottom of the field. Yes. This is uh, to hold the soil so you can have a, a, a 
fair amount of playground, not, not a lot, but there needs to be time for the, for the OAG people to put together uh, slides and, and yep. stuff for us. To, so that's why I'm, yep. I'm, I'm pressing on that issue, yes. that we've got to really come to uh, a decision and, and move forward on it as, as soon as possible. I think they need to, um, if, if I can say in here, this, this forum, I think they need to now pull collective meetings together around that enabling phase. There's been a lot of exploratory and separate meetings to actually uh, pull it together, but I do think everybody coming together with the, with the timeline and discussing the parking and, and the fencing and everything else that goes with it. Right. I so where, where do you think you are with that? I mean, I, I'm hearing two sides of the story. I'm hearing they're waiting on us from an administrative standpoint. We're waiting mm -hmm. on them. So where are we at? Just what needs to be done? To Kip's point, there is concern about what we're going to present on the 5th. I don't think we want to push that date back. No. We're trying to present to the board on the 25th. We want to get in front of the RTM, but there seems to be this game of who's waiting on who is the feedback that I'm getting. <clears throat> okay, but I don't know who's the feedback that that's from, but uh, I, I know from, from Dave, he said as soon as this uh, design phase was over, he would jump into really the, the enabling phase to, to wrap it up type thing. I just think it need to come together for the most part. Right, for, but my understanding is they're waiting on decisions from the administration as to don't know which you decisions move in the are. library or you move in the cafeteria. That stuff yeah. seems to be going back and forth. So well, we, we told we kind of we've told them. Okay. That's that's we've, fine. We've told them. So that Slam should be putting it together as a drawing. Yes. Yes. And then O and G can go from there. Yeah. Right. Is there a lot to be changed about the parking or is that still is that Pretty much understood, you know, interim parking during construction. Um, I think we're still waiting for any other thoughts they have about that parking configuration. Okay. Um, we don't have a, you know, thought around what would happen to those spaces that are getting reduced right now. Aside from that, we're going to have to find them elsewhere, um, whether that's along the side of the building or, you know, relative to where that portable is going to sit. Um, but we don't have answers to that yet from Slam. So, okay. has anyone reached out to that church to ask about parking? No. But that stuff, I think needs to be thought about in terms of if you're looking for additional parking and if someone needs to leave that let's make a decision yeah. that seems to be vacant most of the time whether it's construction parking or whether it's teacher parking or over you know probably should be yeah. more teacher parking and maybe we figure out a shuttle or something mm -hmm. so there, there's space there for uh, parents and stuff like that but yeah so all those things need to I mean all those logistical things in a transition and the safety and everything else that goes with that does need to be Address and I don't want to do that. I certainly don't want to do that piecemeal. Um, so uh, uh, it'd be nice. To, and if I have to call it. I mean, I'm happy to call it, right? Um, but for the most part, the space and for the kids is settled. Uh, for the board meeting, which is really uh, Tuesday night as an update, and then the PT, I wouldn't be over committing to uh, to the finalization of the enabling phase in the sense of parking and all that sort of stuff. That's still the honest answer to that is still to be those parts are still to be finalized. Where the children are going to be. Uh, I think we've got locked down, but and I'm happy to call that if we want to do that. Dick, that's that's fine. Yeah, I think the only thing <coughs> that we have to be aware of in that, in that meeting is that we're talking to the neighbors <coughs> as well as to the parents, and the neighbors are going to want to know, okay, what's this going to? This is the first time they're going to even see the, the yep. building and the drawing and understand the timelines. They're going to want to know, okay, how long is this construction going to take place? When are you starting? When are you, you know, what what about the water runoff? What about uh, all the construction vehicles moving around. I mean, we don't have to have a, uh, a totally buttoned up uh, plan. We need one for the school because we, we have to go before the the state uh, office with a plan by, was it April? Yeah, by April. But uh, we do it, I just want to make sure we don't, we don't uh, leave a complete hole so people say, well, what about this? What about that? We, we, I understand we don't have to be 100% yeah, buttoned up. But uh, obviously, with that kind of commitment, what do you feel, Alan, that you need next? Immediately? What I need today, I, I need Dave because he because construction. I need Dave and Slam at the table to go over all the all the things that we. I would agree to that. I mean, that's that's what needs to happen, right? Okay. Um, and I was informed by them that let's get through the D and D design part before we actually do that. But that's okay. We can. I think we do need to do that. I don't want to do it in piecemeal. Though. Let's do, yeah. do the park and then let's well, do something else. The key else. is if you've made all the decisions from a school yeah, and from where the children are going to be, that's huge. That's yeah, we're good. We need it sounds like you've made all those, right? Yes. Yeah. So that's fine. And then, Michael, is there anything we're left, I've left out no, of that? I don't, I don't no, think. That was the, the focus of the meeting we had a week ago was um, to go, go over the idea of 
keeping the cafeteria as a whole part of the school day-to-day yeah. -day operations, and we think we've got a good solution. Um, okay. Dr. Bradley's idea, it's a great idea, and kind of it keeps all the regular classroom inside the building. The main building, right. Yes, which was always the goal. Okay, well, um, I'll follow up. I, I'm happy to follow up with them to see if, we, if, if you want me to pull that meeting together. I'm happy to do that because it, it needs to happen now, right? Because well, I have to talk with both Amy and Dave <coughs> probably this afternoon, and I'll I'll pass that message yeah. on. Yeah, and say you know because they I know that David knows that this the <coughs> March fifth clock is ticking. Yeah, and whatever you need for your for the board of ed, is it twenty fifth? Yes. yes. Yeah. That's really okay. Um, with regard to technology, what was that? What came out of all that? I saw a long list from was it D'Agostino? Yeah, so we met with D'Agostino Partnerships. Uh, now, two weeks back, myself, Jeff Adams, Mike, uh, Amy Samuelson from SLAM, um, and they just basically walked through the kind of interoperability between our current systems and what they're recommending. So the first phase was just making sure that their recommendations were aligned with everything else that's being used across the district and town. Um, to, the, the good answer to that is it is, so that there's a lot of um, compatibility between those systems. Um, and then D'Agostino was sort of thinking through best practices in technology, you know, set up, how are you going to set up the AV boxes, where would you put telephones, what kind of wiring you need, and we gave them kind of a blow by blow of what we hoped for um, in that uh, relative to what other buildings have, relative to what our technology department thought were best practices, and so um, that's, that's where it stood from a few weeks back. Is the technology being uh, installed in the school um, a step ahead of everything else? Because, my, yeah. my understanding was that it, this was basically about the infrastructure first. So okay. where do you want your Ethernet jacks? Where do you want your phone lines to be? What about you know speaker systems? And where would you like your kind of teaching station? But they don't yet commit to the kind of specificity technology until okay. FFME. Similar logic, that you don't want to buy the kind of display 2020 when 2022, who knows what we're going to have. So okay. um, I think there are some placeholders relative to the exact models, um, but the ideas are, are pretty well established. Is there a broader, to your point, is there a broader thought process, process, Alan, that this is technology as we invest going forward that we would use in other schools as we do upgrades? Uh, we're not buying specific for this school and then we'll think of something else for another school when the time comes. Well, I have to see. Uh, I have to see the, the overlay of what that technology actually did just to sign off on that to make sure that, that that's the case. I, I could say yes easily, right, but... but right, right. So that, what you talked about involves, which I think has come up in the past, is the layout of the classroom. Where is yes. this teacher desk going to be versus the student desk? So yep. where everything starts yep. to get ported and plugged in. Exactly. Okay. Right. Now they have reviewed the whole technology with Jeff and... Jeff was there. Yeah, Jeff was at the meeting. I Jeff, saw that. Yeah, our IT director was there, and again, that was the first big chunk of it. Are these systems, you know, simpatico across the rest of the district? We're not looking to install something at Oxbridge. We don't have elsewhere. So that from a maintenance standpoint, not. Or as we upgrade screens in the other schools, they'll be in line with this technology. Right. That we're yeah. Right. And we'll have to prepare what single source letters, I think, or for the, since we're going to be using, uh, we're not going to be bidding on some of this stuff because we want it to be compatible with those other systems. That some well the technology side that is with the alarm systems right. and things like that yeah. yeah camera system we have to develop all the yes. long letters about single source bidding and all that okay good um, is there anything else that people want to discuss about the project this morning probably useful just to update on the security yeah. Um, I'll leave, I'll leave that to you. No, I mean, it can be, it can be, no, yes. but it can be brief. Just that uh, we've had two meetings. I think they've been very productive meetings. All the first responders and people who should be at the table are at the table. Um, and uh, the next meeting, I believe, is March 5th, at which point they're coming back to, to uh, sort of outline where everything exactly is going to be. Um, there had to be an offline meeting between the first responders in terms of, so this will be a big thing for, the, for this committee, right? Um, in terms of what the glass is. Right, um, because there's different, there's different levels of glass and the protection and so on and so forth. Um, so you go from sort of ballistic, sort of right around the building to anything in between. Um, so our first responders have uh, requested that uh, they want it minimally priced out to be the first flush of this to be ballistic right around the right around the outside of the building up to about 
whatever it is, six or seven, eight feet or something. And if there's any glass in the classroom uh, doors, uh, they want that to be ballistic too. Uh, so that might present the committee with some decisions to make, you know, as, as, as we move forward type of thing. Um, but there, there was two, two real productive, good productive meetings. We have Kerma there with, again, all the first responders of uh, Mike and everyone else. So uh, it went well. Um, I don't know if I'm leaving in. Mike, you took, you're there too. You're there too, Kevin. Yeah, well, I, I, the reason I didn't bring it up directly is because I know that some of it should be offline. Yeah. Um, and I, but, but uh, yeah. Um, we did uh, visit, just, just so you know, like uh, Sandy Hook and different places um, just to get a sense, right? Um, and I have to say, like, even what we have at the moment is very compatible with a lot of it, but there were some, some sort of takeaways uh, that we've sort of tried to infuse a little bit, like, for instance, even the bus loop a little bit, trying to be, do a little bit better job with the bus loop and different things, but, uh, but we're up and running and we're in a good spot. The only thing that's important to know is that the same technology consultants, uh, D'Agostino, are also the safety security consultants, so that they're looking at the same kind of <coughs> Right. Without getting into detail, they're, they're making sure that equipment is both um, consistent across the rest of the system and that, you know, compatible. compatible. Correct. Compatible, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I learned there's lots of different types of glass. Yes. <laughs> Ballistic glass is the most expensive. Was there anything at that last design meeting that came out of the conversation around the library uh, space? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. That's probably quite important. Um, actually, uh, in the the uh, the workshop um, um, presentation, didn't include it or didn't show it, and the minutes sort of talk about it. the uh, the library, the media center. As you know, it's currently designed so it's on those two floors in the courtyard. Um, a better design, which pretty much everyone has said is the way to go, yeah. is to have it over where, in what they call the assembly section of the building, where the OP, TP, and the, and the, uh, and the, is it the music room? The other side of the gym. The music room, the music, music room, 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 the music room, the music, music room, and the PT. Yeah. Uh, put it there. And the reason is you're going to be able to have, have, have it be joined together in one space. And as the building floor <laughs> slopes down, uh, it, you, get, you gain another six feet of height, so you have a, a larger space. Uh, it also is right off the lobby. Yeah. It has a more attractive appeal as you first walk in. You see this rather uh, attractive media center. And all we have to do is figure out where the other things that we're moving around go um, and there's been some discussion about that and I'm going to be talking to Amy this afternoon about some possibilities on that. Um, we still have to talk about, and I, I don't know, I think we want to talk with the with Slim about whether we want to build today that extra classroom on the ELP wing. It's on the main level just to give us the flexibility to have more space to move things around should we need to. And maybe that's one of the places that uh, can be a solution for where the OPPT or whatever goes. I'm not saying it goes out there, but um, it just seems to me that um, they've got three. It started out that we're building a school. Now, it's, now, now, now we've got two more missions, it seems, that have come up, um, and reasonably so. One is that we're going to consolidate the DLC in this building, which wasn't part of the initial program. And number two, this school will act really like a safety valve as the district tries to get rid of the pods at the other schools as they upgrade them. So you have to have a place where the students can be. And to the degree that this, is, this site's very difficult to build on, it's, isn't it better to build it on the first shot, and that's a little bit larger than probably necessary for the students that are going to be there initially, um, but a wiser approach, so that you have the room, the flexibility, the safety, the safety valve, if you will, in the district. Now, I'm speaking about the district's job, not mine, mm -hmm. but this is sort of the, I think, is where the philosophy is trying to move to. I, you have to correct me if I'm wrong on that, but uh, I think that's what's going on here. Would you agree? Well, it depends what you mean by the ninth. Do you mean the ninth ELP room, or do you mean an additional one beyond that? The additional one beyond that. 
in other words, there's a, there's a space available <coughs> on the southeastern oh, wing yeah. to put on the, only yeah. on the main floor. Right. You all go down. That's right. To put one more structure. So this go back to ten classrooms. Yeah. Yeah. You'd have ten. You'd have ten classrooms, but not necessarily dedicated to ELP. Right. Just ten class, another classroom. So it's easy for me to, as a superintendent to say I'd, I'd, I'd like the additional space and it'll always come in handy. Um, I, think that, I think the building is well structured as it is for classroom space. Um, but, I mean, if, it's, if it accommodates, which it probably would, some of the moving around that we're going to have to do through all these libraries, reimagined and a portable studies and stuff. Um, but I think, it's a, I think it goes, I think as a, a, a a discussion probably for the whole group at some point just should, should that uh, be in place there because um, it's, it's just an extra classroom that we're, we're building essentially yep right so correct a full-size classroom right a thousand square feet you know mm -hmm. so the building as it is right now or else I would be clamoring for another, another room right um, I, I only I only put it on the table because it seems to be we look, as we look at the design and we look at the cost of construction and we look yeah. at, you know, is this a smart move to do today? And I agree, it would be making it too large. But to, to John's point, originally, um, the last thing he wants to hear, the Board of Finance wants to hear is in three years, uh, whoops, we've got we to put an addition on well, it. Yeah, I mean, it make <clears throat> well, I'd say that our last two big projects, whether it's high school or Tokenique, they were really not designed with extra capacity. I mean, the buildings were fine. But in retrospect, there was rethinking of the space. There was a reconfiguration to create capacity and all that. Uh, this is the time to give that a try. <clears throat> I think we have got uncertain demographics because of a lot of uh, state regulatory pressure as well as these construction projects in town that are about to launch. And they're so big and the state mandate on this is so significant. I really just don't think you can predict things with certainty. Uh, and you compare that with the incremental cost of building this extra capacity, this is the time to do that because once we do that, we're going to be short on capacity throughout the district for a while while we try to get rid of these portables and all that. So it could be five, six, eight years of sort of capacity constraints while we get all this shuffled around and straightened out uh, starting from today through the construction of this project. I just think it's a mistake to, un to under design this from a capacity standpoint. I think as you look at the site, I, I don't think you're going to wind up going back to the Board of Finance or any other body in town and saying we want to build one classroom. Right? I mean, I think the site, <laughs> the site is tight enough that if you do it now, because I don't I see... I won't be chairman. <laughs> yeah, fine, 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 fine. But it, it does give the ability of a swing space. There is a demand and there is a process in place to remove the portables. And once that's done, there's a whole ripple effect of what has to be done in terms of right-sizing classrooms at Royal, additional need for classrooms at other schools. So it just seems logical from a construction and a cost standpoint that that classroom fits there and it gives us, you know, maximum flexibility. But I think the key is, as this has evolved in terms of DLC classrooms, the ELP yeah. classrooms, yeah. what we're doing is saying, look, there's classrooms in there and the way the school is designed, they can be used whether for kindergarten, ELP, DLC, and it gives us the flexibility in the swing space if we have to move you know, a neighborhood or a street back or forth to accommodate these schools, it gives us the opportunity. And yeah, I hear you just, I don't know, just. That's like, listen, you, you don't have to look to a superintendent too, too. <laughs> <laughs> that's great for, that's, uh, that's, if that's, if that's, if, if that's the understanding and people think that's a, a good idea, which I think is a good idea, um, then let, let's do it now. Well, uh, see this building committee doesn't have the, uh, background of the of the district or the board of education mm -hmm. except for, for Duke. Yeah. we don't we're not at your meeting seeing what your what your, your long-range uh, needs are and, and it, that's why it's probably important now that we make sure that we don't make a mistake here yeah. if there's long-range needs that if so well, one of the things I guess what I would say is from my vantage point with where we are with all of that right it certainly will help and create and create more flexibility for us I mean Definitely will do that for us. Yeah. Well, I just think that maybe I, I know the state will always. I mean, I remember what uh, what's her name, Michelle Dixon said. Yes. Just don't come back with more. Well, yeah. We're, we're coming back. <coughs> well, we've had two different two different conceptual changes. One was the DLC, and now we're talking about making room in the district 
as the district wants to get rid of all the the, the, uh, the portables and, and make changes in those schools. So I, I don't know. Well, so I mean, in terms of timing, that it's probably a rather important decision that do it now. we make soon. We have right? to make it now. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, right. I would say that by the, we're having a, what, a workshop next week. I mean, I'm, that's what I'm going to call Amy on this afternoon okay. and say, look, I know you, you know, I don't want you to go crazy, but I, I want you to think about putting that extra classroom in, and then we'll figure out how to explain to the to, to uh, Michelle Dixon and all the people up there. Thanks. I, thanks. I, <laughs> <laughs> can I pass the buck to you? <laughs> but I mean, yeah. uh, but it, it's a it's a it's a bigger picture, and I think it's with John's mm -hmm. John's experience. Of, it's showing we should think that way. It also just seems logical if you look at the layout. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just like get it yeah. done now versus you, you're never going to, you can't go up there. So, yeah. and the other areas for expansion are a little tight. Yeah. It just seems like it completes kind of that part of the school. So. I think so. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna, I will be talking to you this afternoon. I appreciate the, the background. So that, that moving the library doesn't necessarily get all those other rooms into the former library space. Uh, well, it, we, we may have this, we may have this space elsewhere to uh, at least yeah. for the time being to put them yeah. right, especially if we put that extra. Yeah, the concept makes sense. Yeah, my understanding though from the architect was that it was going to create a squeeze that they were able to take that yeah. the two story concept and use the bottom part of that library to reallocate for another space. I, I think there the art room or something. Correct. I think they were thinking about the art room because it would spell Which is perfect. But you're, you're more comfortable, Luke, especially with the library yeah. concept. Ah, that listen. That I think it's the right In all right. honesty, until yeah. a few weeks ago, until you actually see the thing, I was like, oh, wait a minute, that's not going to work. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is much better. I mean, and plus, you don't want some, uh, a, a member of the public walking in thinking, why did we well, do Well, if you think thing? about it, right. in terms of <coughs> using library space after hours, it makes sense because then that whole part of the building, the library, the gym, and the cafeteria can be used for weekend space and right. cordon <coughs> the rest of the school. Where the library was, you still have people going through the main school. So That's right. it makes sense even from a security standpoint. Yeah. yeah. Michael, you were going to say something? Yeah, sorry. I have uh, the infrastructure up, or uh, enabling phase update. Yes, sir. Uh, SLAM had a structural engineer out on uh, Tuesday going through the building looking for areas um, where they're going to cut off and how to do I walked him through and showed him all the uh, the rooms that are staying and the rooms that are going. His diagram's a little off. So uh, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. I'm sure. Help. Hence a meeting. Just a wee bit off. Yeah. You mean, <laughs> you mean this scribble doesn't work? <laughs> <laughs> you know, meeting there are two different things. And uh, so that was good. And all the uh, all the test uh, drilling has been done. The boring samples. The boring samples. Uh, most of the soil was to be expected. Um, sandy, and down to some till with, you know, stone rubble in it. And, you know, rubble stone was not rubble like debris. And, and they, they, they left a uh, test monitoring well. They filled in all the areas on the play fields and stuff and they were breaking them out yesterday. They dug the four test pits. And the two test pits behind the school show that the, uh, the playing area in the back there is fill on top of the wetland, or whatever was down there below. So when they dug down about two and a half feet, they started hitting old logs and tree stumps. And, and then they hit a layer of muck under there. So the drainage down there is probably going to be a little challenging for the, uh, for the retention work that they have to yeah. do on the lower area. It's, uh, it's, it's not impossible for engineers, but it's going to be a little challenging. I mean, they expensive. Well, they had they had the they had a very disappointing perk test on one of the, on one of the holes. This is on the far western side of the of the, of the property. That's correct. Okay, out in the back. Yes. Not to be on a, not to be. Surprised about that, I guess. No, the, not they, they. They dug a hole behind that uh, where the, the blue uh, ball wall is, and then they dug a hole out and um, more over towards the playground pieces uh, that are out there on, on the southwest corner. Uh, Does the design still show a, a permanent retaining wall down there? Yes. 
I believe so. We used to have a huge one with a net over it in early right. conceptual, but I thought that went away. No, they, it went away, but now it's got to go back. Oh. It's got to go back because they said that if we're going to move the soil down there and still have a field for the children to play in during construction, they've got to put the retaining wall back so in. So this is a temporary no, condition? No, a permanent. Okay. So, okay. I mean, it's added to the cost, but it, it saves taking the soil off site, which okay. adds a huge From cost. The excavation. Uh, yeah. And of course, it's only going to be down there for you know, what, eight months, six months, whatever. Whatever. And, uh, Did they come to any conclusion on that grade for that if it's actually the overflow parking? They talked about that if they were going to make it for overflow parking, they had to, on the northern end, they had to create a more of a, a gradual ramp down for cars to get down there. Which then took away from some of the places. Some, yeah. some of the playing fields. So there, there's a train off there that you have to have that or not. And I think they needed their expert on topology that they were circling back with to see how that would go. But the, the point of the boring samples, besides the fact that we've got a, a problem down at the, at the western border, um, is that the soil where we're going to build is is good. It's what they thought it was going to be. Yes. Which is good because we don't have yes. to bring in. I mean, the original idea was going to bring in you know a couple hundred yards, yards a thousand yards. yards. Yeah. No. No. Okay. They, they're good. The soil. The soil where the building is going to be constructed is it's good. good. Excellent. Did. Um, has Hygienics completed their uh, I don't know, study, or they, they have a recommendation during for the enabling phase? Yes, he finished his study, and um, I put him in touch with Amy. Okay. So when he writes up his specification piece for for the uh, for the enabling, you know, for the demolition, yep. he says phase one, um, he can have his headers and footers match slams. So it like seamlessly goes right in the, the book. So okay, he's done that for you know other right. architectural firms, and uh, so I I left it with them last Thursday that they had each other's emails. I, I will he ask him. He had the spec uh, like ninety percent completed. Um, he and I walked the site last uh, Thursday, was it? Yes, we saw him. Yeah, Tuesday. Uh, yeah, Tuesday. Last Tuesday, right? And and so we. We actually walked exactly where uh, some of the windows that tested positive for PCB. Right. Um, there's a certain excavation, uh, right. 18, in, uh, 18 inches down, three feet out, which you have to do around. Um, so we we laid out exactly where those excavations were going to be. Okay. So we're not excavating, you know, where there's just a straight brick wall. Right. Did the engineer? The structural engineer tell you we have to do something special, or is he coming back with a report? Because we'll need that for the. No, he's report. coming back. Um, he's coming back with a report. He he didn't seem to no. think, you know, a lot of places where the where the uh, building shows is breaking. Right. Um, it, it's a natural place for it to be. Um, That's great. Like when you go down the ramp past the art room. Yeah. Um, the slam had shown him preliminarily that they were going to have a set of doors that would be flush with that uh, north-south corridor. But if you come out eight feet, there are doors and an exit sign, and there's a structural concrete beam. Uh, so I said, why don't you go here? Just you know, put a wall here, and you save all the money on the doors and stuff. So he was gonna recommend that. Okay. And so I, I think we're in good shape. Yeah, he, was, he was laughing about the um, clean break in the steel type. You could see that they had patched on over time, and so, for what it's worth, it was just very apparent to him from an engineering standpoint where the That's where you break. Yep, and he's like, okay, there. So he was laughing about how clean it looked to me. So that was a good sign, I thought. There were no surprises at all. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Right. But, but, you know, things like looping in the heat and stuff like that, that's... <laughs> yeah, but that had to be done anyway. We had to be done with the yeah. and stuff. Okay. Well, nice to get good news for change, yes. Um, <laughs> There's no public here to comment. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, our next meeting will be March 5th, 7.30. Uh, that evening we'll have our presentation to the parents in the neighborhood. Um, and we'll have a meeting. We have, there's a workshop next week uh, for those who can attend, which is supposed to be in getting toward the end of our DD work. Yeah. 
next Thursday. Yeah, next Thursday. Yeah. 830, mm -hmm. whatever. Any more business? Hearing none, can I have a motion to adjourn from Duke and from John? All in favor? Thank you all very much.